In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a fixed loop in visualbasic.net. A fixed loop is where a section of code is repeated a predefined number of times. In the section of pseudocode shown on the screen, 20 circles are drawn. A variable i starts off as 1 and each time it goes around the loop, a circle is drawn and i is increased by 1 until i becomes 20. The type of loop that we're making is sometimes called a for next loop. There will also be some exercises for you to do at the end of this video. We start by creating a new project. We have to check it's in .NET Framework 4.0 instead of 4.5. And also we call that project loops exercise. We have to check that that project's in its own folder, so we create a folder for that project and only that project. We don't want to mix projects together. Each project will contain a number of different files. I will call the folder loops. Then click OK. Now we're in the development environment and we can start making our program. We'll click start to check that the program runs. If it doesn't run, you'll have to go back and follow the instructions for setting up the project again. Next, click on the toolbox on the left hand side, click the button, drag it and position it on your form. With the button highlighted, you'll see the properties for it on the right hand side of the screen. On the text property, change it to start. This is the name that's displayed on the button and on the name property, change it to BTN start. Now double click on the button. This will bring you to the part of the program that's activated when the button is clicked. Visual Basic is object oriented and event driven. The objects are things like forms and buttons and labels and the events are things like clicking on the buttons. Here you can see the framework to input the code for the button click event. I'll save the program now to save what we've done so far and then I'll run it and double click on the button but we'll see that nothing happens because there's no code in there. I'll click on the red square at the top to stop the program then I'll click the left hand tab which will be the form code and we'll go and start typing some code in. Firstly, we're setting up an area called My Graphics on which we're going to draw our random circles. The me.create tells it to create it on the current form that we're using. Next, we are going to dimension some variables. This sets them up in Visual Basic and it also allocates an area of memory in which to store their values. We're calling these int red, int green and int blue and they're to contain the red, green and blue values of the random circles we're going to draw. We're also specifying that these are data type integer. Next we dimension a variable called myPen and make it type pen. We also set the value of myPen. We set this as ARGB alpha, red, green, blue. The alpha is how translucent the colour is, i.e. how see-through it is. We're only putting in red, green and blue values. We're putting a red value of 255, green is naught and blue is naught. So what colour will that make? Similarly, we're setting up a brush for the fill colour for the inside of the circles. You will need this later on in one of the exercises. The 
you can see how Visual Basic is trying to generate code words for us. You can press enter to accept this code word or otherwise press the next character that you would have pressed. This also accepts the code word. The next line is where we start the loop for i equals 1 to 20. I'm also adding a comment. A comment starts with a single speech mark in visualbasic.net. A comment can be at the end of a line or it can be on a line on its own. It's shown in green. Comments are very important to show the programmer what he's done in the past or to show another programmer what he's done and why. Commenting code also helps you to learn and understand a new language. We're going to draw our circles with random colours and to do this we're making the variables int red, int green and int blue as random numbers between 0 and 255 and setting the colour from these. Notice that the statements within the loop between the for statement and the next statement are indented. This is good programming practice and helps the programmer and other programmers see what's actually within the loop. This is where we set the random colour, i.e. the values generated within the variables int red, int green and int blue to our pen. We could also do a similar thing with the brush to make the circles solid. This will be one of the exercises you could do at the end. This is where we draw circles. We draw them using the draw ellipse command.
To help you with the exercises, you can have a look and work out what the arguments in this command do, or look them up. This is the Visual Basic fixed loop. It goes round it 20 times and draws 20 random circles. There's something wrong with our code. You can see the int green statement is underlined in blue, so we've got to see what's wrong there. Ah, I see, I put in a bracket instead of a multiplication sign. Let's run it and see what happens. It's drawing the 20 random circles. As you can see, each time you press the start button, it draws another 20 random circles. Now save the code and there are some exercises for you to do. Here are some exercises for you to do. You'll find some clues in the video and you'll have to research some things on the internet. When you've completed exercises two, five and eight, it should look something like this.